On August 21st, 1993, Robert and Carolyn Blaschick, their daughter and their six-year-old son, Jordan, were visiting their uncle's ranch in Granby, Colorado, when they were reminded how important it can be to trust one's instincts. My Uncle Jimmy was very confident in the horses. They were his horses and knew that they could handle going down the mountain. Everyone was enjoying getting down the trail. But it was, to me, a very frightening mountainous trail. It was different from the sort of riding we had ever done in the past. And we were quite happy when we got down to the bottom. The group had left the ranch around 11.30 that morning. When we're about ready to go, all of a sudden I looked at Jordan and I realized he didn't have his helmet with him. Jordan really didn't want to wear it, you know, he wanted to be like me and Gina without a helmet. I had never even heard of somebody wearing a helmet going horseback riding. It dawned on me I had a bicycle helmet in the barn. Put it on him and when he would turn his head like so, the, the helmet would jiggle. So uh, Rob said, we're going to take it off and he can ride without it. And then Jimmy said at that point, even though he had kind of laughed at us earlier, you know, I'm superstitious. If you really wanted it that badly, I want him to wear it now. And I took it off and did some adjustments to it and put it back on so that it was working out perfectly for him. You look good in the saddle, Carol. Thank you. We rode for about an hour and a half, and we decided to stop and have our picnic lunch. It was the first time that all of us as a family had been together in, in many, many years. The uh, freight train went by, and some of the younger kids thought it'd be a good idea to moon the train, which they uh, successfully did and couldn't understand why nobody uh, reacted to it. We heard some thunder in the distance. We thought, well, maybe we better start heading back to the ranch. All of a sudden, Jenna's horse spooked. Cut her up before she gets up that hill. I was watching that happening, and it was sort of in shock. And then behind me, I heard Rob, my husband, yelling, Jordan, let go of the reins. Jordan, don't pull on the reins. Let go of the reins. Drop the reins, Jordan. Drop the reins, boy. I heard a crunch that is a sound that just permeates my, my being. And I just saw this little lifeless body there, and I knew he could not be possibly alive. All we heard was a very loud crunching sound. Hearing that sound was the most awful thing I've ever heard in my life. Jordan, 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 Jordan. I saw just a flicker of life on his face, and I realized he was alive. But I really believed he was paralyzed and probably would be the rest of his life. And I just kept thinking, well, I'm going to take care of him uh, you know, his whole life. When we continue, where's he going? I thought, my God. This is it. We're, now we're stuck here. Now nobody's going to be able to help us if that helicopter can't land. Right. It will take 18 hours of intensive surgery to remove a 200-pound tumor from Lori's body. Witness her struggle on Super Surgery, tonight on Discovery Health Channel. Next on Discovery Health Channel. 911. It's the call that saves lives. True stories that one day could help you in an emergency. Rescue 911, coming up next, only on Discovery Health Channel. Marna had had some training as a nurse. He's gonna be all right. And Jimmy said, how is he? And Marna said, get on your horse and ride back and get a helicopter. 
Jim Bear headed back to his ranch with his grandson, Matt. Come on, Matt! I was so scared about Jordan that uh, I tried not to think about the situation with him because I subconsciously just knew he was going to be dead when I got back down there. Jordan was starting to come to. At that point, Marna said to us, look, we have to keep him as still as possible. Right here. Mommy's right here, baby. We're right here with you. And then he just got more and more and more hysterical, and it was so frustrating to me because I knew that if I could just look, pick him up and hold him in my arms, I could calm him down. But I knew I couldn't do that. Mommy's right here, sweetie. Mommy's right here. I don't know how we did it, but we got up the mountain in like 17 minutes, and it's like a two-hour ride. Matt, take the reins, walk these horses. 911, what is your emergency? I have a horse accident. I have a rider who may have a concussion, a track skull, or a broken neck or back. I'm going to need a helicopter. Okay, where where are they? Fraser Valley. The rider is in a clear pasture. Hurt What's hurting? What's hurting? Oh, we could see that there was a piece of the helmet that was digging into his head. I'm going to take it off. Don't move, okay, honey? I'm going to hold his head and immobilize his neck. You slip it off gently, slowly. Don't move. Don't move, Don't move, Don't move. Okay, sweetie. Please, don't move. When we took it off, we were kind of in shock because it seemed like hundreds of pieces of helmet. Don't move, don't move. Try not to move, sweetie. Jordan. There came a point when I felt almost like I couldn't be there. It was it was so difficult. And at a point where he was calm and quiet, I had to walk away and try and get a control back over my emotions. I felt like I was walking through my worst nightmare. By the time Grand County Sheriff's Deputy Ron Rathbun got to the scene, an hour had passed. Sweetie, you let him fall asleep. I don't know if that was right. Go ahead and wake him up. I wanted him to wake him up because I wanted to be able to talk to him to see what the extent of his injuries were, where he was hurting. Jordan, Jordan, sweetie. Talking with the parents, I could see this, this look on their face. I, I know they were terrified. I did have them put down their slickers. The quicker the helicopter saw us, they located us, the quicker they could sit down and get him out of there. The sheriff's here. He's going to help us, sweetie. I was very, very concerned. I thought that he might, in fact, die. There was a very faint whirring of, of a helicopter that we could hear. And I just was so grateful. I was just so thankful. I thought, oh, my God, they're coming. They're coming. The noise was getting louder and louder. It was just overpowering. And all of a sudden, I heard it take off. Where's he going? I was devastated. I was thoroughly devastated. I thought, my God. This is it. We're, now we're stuck here. Now nobody's going to be able to help us. If that helicopter can't land, I just knew there was no other way out. I did contact the helicopter and ask him what his problem was. Apparently he had an extra person on board. He had to land and let this person get off. The pilot was concerned about crosswinds, so he wanted to take some weight off. The Flight for Life helicopter arrived from Denver about an hour and a half after the accident. A Grand County ambulance unit also got to the scene, including EMT Jason Sheese. I was concerned for the child because any head injury is serious. The body's just not made to withstand the force of a, of a horse falling on your head. Jordan, I'm right here, sweetie. I'm not leaving you. Okay, oxygen, okay. and we're up. Okay, wait. <laughs> I remember this man turning to me and saying, 
meet us in Denver. And I started screaming and begging him and saying, please, that's a baby. You can't take my baby away. And the paramedic said to me, I can't let you on the helicopter because that would mean I can't go. And I said, you're right. When I watched that helicopter go up, I really didn't think I'd ever see him again. Six-year-old Jordan Blaschick was flown to Providence St. Anthony Hospital Central in Denver. It took Carolyn and Robert Blaschick three hours to get to their son's hospital. And he looked up and just looked at me and said, Mom, what took you so long? Sweetie, bye. And I was just feeling so awful knowing what he had been through by himself. Hi. Are you, are you Jordan's parents? Yeah. The neurosurgeon came in, and his first question to us was, what made you have him wear a helmet? He said, nobody around here wears helmets. And we said, I guess partly we're city slickers. So can we stay with them? And he just said to us, well, you've got to know that helmet saved his life. It absolutely saved his life. Although Jordan suffered a broken leg and a skull fracture, there was no brain damage. He has completely recovered. Sometimes I think that my, I have a whole life ahead of me. I think I'm one of the luckiest kids alive to get past that. The fact that Jordan survived and is totally okay has completely changed my life. I think about my good fortune every minute of the day now. I just, I love him so much. And there, there are moments when I, I look at him and I watch him just being himself and having fun and being adorable, and I just cringe when I think how close I came to losing him. I like to say thank you to all the people that helped me stay alive, and they were very brave. The fact that he has come through this so well, and that he is fine and healthy and happy, has made me the happiest person I think I could be. I didn't want to wear the helmet at first, but I'm glad I did, because it saved my life. I think everyone should wear a helmet.